Hi, welcome to Quackalo. Wait, you're supposed to start. Sorry, no, 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 you're going. I'll take a you're step going. back. I'm no, good. No, it's your turn. No, it's wait, Devin. You're supposed to start. Oh, sorry. I apologize. My fault. Hello, hello. Welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today we're teaching you how to play Soul Forge Fusion by Stoneblade Entertainment. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a different style of video. You see, I'm not just going to throw a lot of rules and instructions at you. If you're here for the how to play, fantastic. The first 10 minutes will have you covered. But if you want to see how the game operates and get down to the nuance of well, how to get it to the table as quickly as possible, we're actually doing a full gameplay alongside this instructional video. So stay tuned, enjoy the show, and let me know in the comments down below. Who's going to destroy each other? West or Devin? Who ends crime? Hello, my name is West Todd, also known as The Mingo. And I am here to play Soul Forge Fusion and defeat Devin again. Hi, I'm Devin from Devin Dog's Tabletop, and I'm playing Soul Forge Fusion, and we're gonna see how badly I messed this one up, because the first time didn't go well. Now, if you're wondering what Soul Forge Fusion is, let me give you three reasons why you should stay tuned for this video. First and foremost, Soul Forge Fusion is going to be a collaboration between two titans in the industry. I'm talking Ascension Tactics, and I'm talking the creator of Magic the Gathering. We're smashing together skill sets and bringing you something that's a truly unique experience. Number two is that every deck you receive in Soulforge Fusion will be algorithmically generated to allow for a variation of play. You see, no two decks will be alike. Every time you dive into the strategy and mix and match the different alliances you're playing with, you'll have a new combination to explore, upgrade, and take out your opponents with. Number three is going to be how you actually progress in the game. You see, Soulforge Fusion is built around the concept of two faction decks mixing together and then slowly upgrading your cards over the course of about 12 total rounds in an average game, depending on when and how fast you drive your opponent to zero health. The unique thing about this is you'll have three different levels of varied cards, starting from basic do a little bit of damage to holy cow, I nearly just destroyed the world and my opponent is bleeding on the pavement. That's one of the coolest things about this. It not only lets you feel powerful, but gives you the pathway to get there quickly. This is a game designed by Justin Gary and Richard Garfield, published by Stoneblade Entertainment. We're pumped to jump into this. And I think, I hope I win this time. You kicked yeah. my butt last time. I'm pretty sure he's not going to win this time, but we'll see. While um, I strategize, which I desperately need, will you please tell us what's going on? So the quick and dirty on Soulforge Fusion, what you're actually trying to do. The object of the game is to drive your opponent's health to zero. You're each going to start with 50 health, and you'll do damage by hitting through these various lanes. This will be a lane battling game. Now, the way you'll do that is you'll have a starting hand of five cards, and each player will be able to play one card at a time for a total of two per round. These could be monsters that go down onto the tableau, these could be spells that have instant abilities, or other cards you might have mixed into your hand. Now, these cards will either be in the blue location, which is the defensive slot, or forward on the battlefield, which is the aggressive slot. Depending on who has the forge installed will determine who is actually engaging in the battle. You'll do cross damage to each other unless you have a clear and open lane where you'll pass through and start dinging down those points. If you make it through a total of four rounds, meaning 12 total turns or actions, and you haven't driven the other person to zero, whoever's done the most damage will be determined and declared the victor. Outside of that, it really comes down to how you want to upgrade and progress your decks. Like I said earlier, the unique thing about Soul Forge is every one of these cards has two more stages of levels. As you play cards, spells that immediately get used and then brought out of the game, and monsters that get played down on the tableau and eventually get destroyed, those cards will immediately upgrade into one of their higher levels, enter your discard pile, and be reintroduced to the game after the first three rounds. The game will be composed of four total sets of play consisting of three rounds each. I'm using Iron Beard and the Gamma Simulacrum Technicians, and I'm using Nyx Nekia and the Warriors of the Glaring Cavern. Now, to be fair, of the f uh, Forgeborn, I'm only... Forgeborn? That's correct. I Forgeborn. said that right, yeah. You did. I'm only using Iron Beard. I'm not using her, but those are the two decks that I'm using. What are you using? I will be using the Mentors of Myth and Amulet, as well as the Explorers of Adopting Youth. So I have red and green. He's got blue and purple. And my particular Forgeborn will be Oros here uh, with the Explorers of Adopting Youth. Uh, I managed to beat Devin playing this game handily. Very easily. Handily beat me. I think he might have been sandbagging. 
Uh, but we're going to do our best to not only give you the ins and outs of how we're playing and why we're playing, at least for the first two rounds, uh, but keep in mind that your goal is either to play a character uh, here along, a creature, excuse me, here along these main five lines, or you can play a spell which will alter either a character or uh, do some damage to the person across the table from you. My experience with Soul Forge Fusion is that I've had the opportunity to run through the rules a few times, played uh, two different games already, um, and I've kind of enjoyed it. I like the, the differences that it brings to the table. I wasn't really a huge Magic fan back in the day. I know. Crucify me for that, I, I get it, but um, this has actually been a, a bit of an entertaining uh, uptick here, especially considering I win. I, I typically do that, but I destroy Devin a lot. I don't like West. Um, he doesn't like me, and he likes to eat Beanie Babies. We're already beyond this in the gameplay, but the quick setup, the basic guide is going to be, well, as follows. You're going to have two sets of faction decks. You'll split them down into their base cards, their second level cards, and their level three cards. You'll do that with both. The base cards will all shuffle together, giving you your starting hand of five cards. Your second level will all go together here in this first zone. These will be cards that you upgrade after your base level cards enter your, uh, well, discard-ish pile. Uh, there's two different sections here. You have a discard pile, and you have a location where cards have actually been exiled. And then you're going to have your uh, high-level cards. You'll touch them probably around uh, round two or three in this game, depending on how efficient you've been at leveling up. You'll shuffle these cards together, the base starting cards. You'll draw five of them to have your beginning hand. You'll determine who the first player is going to be, setting either the forge as active or passive. That'll determine where you play into the various lanes. We'll get into that in a second. And you'll choose between your two different starting heroes. These will come from your faction decks and they'll provide you special abilities at different stages throughout the rounds. Now, the only other things you need to check for is that you have your status cards over to the side and you have any of your little uh, kind of uh, playable base characters set off to the side as well. Some cards will pull these in onto the table, but you'll see the reference point for when that happened. All right, start us off because you have, I have the, the forge. forge active and mine is not. Mine's dormant, so you're going to be coming in the top row. I'm going to be coming in the bottom row. Go Sounds ahead. Like fun. Go ahead and get us started. Alright, uh, so I'm looking through my cards here trying to figure out if I've got any decent creatures to work with. Uh, I believe the smartest thing that I can do here is play my um, Toragami Guardian. Uh, I always like starting in the middle. Seems to be easiest. Mm. It's visually prettier that way. Mm. Uh, and when another one of my creatures enters the back row, so if it has defend or if I am no longer in charge of the forge, uh, I will be putting all these characters here. And every time that happens, this particular character will gain plus one uh, for attack power and plus one for health. It's currently a five and a, a five for attack and six for health. Your turn, sir. So Devin and West are starting the game now. Let's take a closer look at exactly how lanes work. You see, whoever has the forge will be playing the aggressive cards. These cards will go here into the top of the lane, and they'll be the ones that are engaging in battle. They take their actions, they get whatever benefits they have, and their attack is going to be smashing up against everything across the board. Now, if any lanes are left clear, you're going to do direct damage to your opponent, unless, of course, there's any special effects or modifiers that change that. Uh, but in this game, I don't think we're going to see any of that. If you have your forge currently cooled or on the gray side, you're going to be playing cards down into the defensive row. These are going to be creatures as well that will move up into an aggressive stance at the start of the next turn when you actually have agency again. But in this case, if you play any defensive creatures down, they'll still get their special abilities, but they're going to be there to really block and punch back. You don't want to leave too many slots open because you'll lose health, but you also want to try to position yourself to have tactical control of certain lanes. I don't like where we're starting with this, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and try to counter that. And I'm going to do it in a stupid way because it died so quickly the last time we played. This is probably not advantageous, but I'm going to deploy the Spite Maiden. And when I do this, I may deal myself five damage. If you do, you may play a number one spell for free or a level one spell, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and play Necrovive, which is going to allow an enemy player to destroy one of their creatures. So that nice little Torgami Guardian that you've got, bye-bye. So there's two different types of cards that you'll primarily be dealing with. Now, some of these cards will have statuses and effects, but largely you're going to be looking at creature cards 
and spell cards. Creature cards are the cards that get played down into the battlefield itself. They're going to be working with attack and defense. You'll see your attack up in the top left hand side, you'll see your health over in the top right hand side, and then some creatures will come with their own defense as well, which of course works as a barrier to being damaged, but doesn't quite count the same as health. Creature cards will also have their standard ability. These abilities will change from game to game and deck to deck. Like I said, every deck is entirely unique. So make sure you read them carefully and use your handy little keyword card if you're not quite sure how an effect works. Spells, however, will be played immediately. They're usually super powered items that allow you to manipulate either your stats or your opponent's stats and sometimes let you just zap someone off the board entirely. If your opponent plays a high level card quickly, you might want to start searching for what powerful spells you have in your docket. Well, this is a great opportunity for me to show you what happens when a creature dies. So, unfortunately, this one didn't really get to do much for me. It's going to be banished over here, but I will pick up my green deck and I'm going to look through here in these beautiful blue cards until I find that Torigami Guardian and I now have the upgraded version, which is fantastic because I'll get to put this in my discard pile but unfortunately now I have nothing to do any damage with, so that's a little disconcerting. Now I'm at minus five for my health, and also I got mm. to increase my deck building, because once I use my spell it goes to the Banish, I've already grabbed on to the upgraded version of my Necro Vive spell, popped it into my discard pile for when we cycle the deck after the third turn. So I'm going to play the Fleet Razor Tooth here to replace my beautiful Guardian. Mm. Uh, and this particular one is uh, 3 attack power with 8 health. It also has mobility of 1, and in this particular case, if I wanted, I could exhaust this creature by turning it sideways and actually move it to either particular lane, um, which is a great advantage, but I can only do that once per uh, turn, so in between the two options that we have here. Yeah, so I think I'm going to, for the sake of... Beautiful things. I'm going to give a good old pal Sigmund Fraud. I'm going to put him in there. He's a creature. He's a zombie scientist who likes you a lot. He's aggressive. Oh, actually, apologies. I should have deployed the Spite Man at the back because yes, I'm not active in the forge. However, Sigmund Fraud does go to the front because he is labeled as aggressive. He is. He does appear to be a bit aggressive. He is. He's got a massive syringe and someone that doesn't look like they're willing. Now in this particular case, you also don't have any other zombies, so thankfully you're not able to utilize that extra piece. Now this brings us to the end of our turn, because all you get to do is have two opportunities to lay cards down, whether they be spells or creatures. Now we're going to take the rest of our remaining hand and place it in the discard pile. And now we're going to resolve what happens on the board. So uh, the aggressive creatures, we'll just go from this side to that side. Is that all right with you? Yes, yeah, sure. All right, so your creature is going to attack me, and that is going to reduce my own personal health by five. That is incredibly unfortunate. And you know what? Just for the sake of maintaining the ease of using all of the components for the creatures instead of ourselves, I'm going to go ahead and pop our health onto an app. Onto an app. So Fantastic. that's going to ping you for 45 down to 45 and I'm still at 50. The good news about that is I don't maths well, so it'll be nice to have Devin be in charge of that, although he does cheat sometimes. I don't cheat. That's <coughs> not a thing. That's I not a thing. I have been called a cheater in board games since I was a kid, and I played Monopoly with my brother and sister, both of whom are older than me. And you know what? They sucked at the game, and I beat them, and they called me a cheater. So I usually just assume that when someone finds me to be better than them, that they lash out in insecurity and call me a cheater. Devin, not only are you a hamster, but your mother smells of elderberries, and you're... Wait, no. I don't remember. Hold on, let me back up. Devin, I'm not going to say that your mother is a hamster because you're a hamster, but your father still probably smells of elderberries. Uh, so here, I'm actually going to go ahead and... Uh do the damage over here and kill this person, uh, but that does mean that you That's fair. don't take any damage from my That's razor fair. tooth. I do do three damage to your health, though. That so is correct, you do. We're going to just go ahead and say that you're at five health minus three. And Sounds now, good, so we'll just actually put it right there. And then let's see, it's my spite maiden got banished, and now I get to actually look for my spite maiden and upgrade them for my discard pile. And now we're going to begin the game uh, anew with a second hand, so we'll each draw five cards again. 
Then I am now in control of the forge. Which means he will be able to put his characters across the front, his creatures, and I will have to lay mine across the back unless they stay aggressive. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, no, I'm also at 50, or 45, because I injured myself for that spell. That is correct. See, he already was cheating. I'm, I'm really good at that. Mm-hmm. All right, we're starting the game. Let's look at how a turn is actually going to flow so you can follow along. I'm currently playing as if I am the player with the forge disabled, whereas my opponent has their forge flipped to the aggressive side. That means they're going to play a starting card into one of these top row areas or a spell card that'll trigger immediately. I'll respond by following with a card of my own, playing it down into the defensive position. They'll do the same, playing up into the aggressive zone, and I'll be able to respond with one more card. Remember, I only have a hand of five cards, so this can be a critical juncture to how the game is going to progress. After the action phase is resolved, we'll enter into the combat phase. The combat phase is going to deal with any creatures that are up here in the top active or aggressive zone. That means right now my opponent would attack through, hitting my tormenting fiend, and this character here would go ahead and ping me for a pile of damage. But let's say the commanding demon happened to have already been in the active attacking zone, I would also be able to attack across during this phase. The end of turn phase is a quick one. We're just going to update any status effects we have that trigger in this turn or end of turn abilities, and my armor will all be restored to normal. In the maintenance phase, I'm going to go ahead and discard the presumably three cards I haven't played over into my discard deck. These will be shuffled in and redrawn at a later time. Any creatures currently in the defensive play, unless forced to stay there, are going to be moved forward into the aggressive zone, and the forge is going to go ahead and flip, making it so that I'm now the active forged player. Along with that, if you have any cards that happen to be exhausted or tapped, you'll go ahead and ready them, turning them back into their active position. Now every three turns that get resolved like that will end up actually having to cycle and redraw our deck of cards. This will involve upgrading any cards that have been exhausted or removed from the game, along with going ahead and shuffling our discard pile and drawing a brand new hand of five. I think I'm gonna go ahead and play myself an indomitable fiend here in the middle to protect against that fleet razor tooth. And that is one of my two moves. All right. I'm going to play our best friend, the Combat Batter Hide, who mm. is going to be defensive over here. Uh, it is going to deploy this turn, and an enemy of one level or lower uh, will lose all printed abilities. So this guy no longer has any printed abilities, and he gets Defender, which moves him back to the back of the line. As long as he's Defender, he cannot move forward at the end of his turn. Uh, which is fantastic for me, and I don't have to worry about that guy anymore. But thankfully it's just for this turn, so I will next turn not be defender, and I will be able to push back to the front. That is very unfortunate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thankfully. Thankfully for my benefit. So, let's see, I'm having a fight here. Having a fight there. And... Choices, choices, choices. I think I'm going to go ahead and for my benefit... Oh, it's such a good one to spend. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to use Virix Embrace and deal four damage to a creature. Now, this won't activate and attack me because there's no one in the front row, but it will drop this person's health all the way down to just one, which we can go ahead and we'll just cover that up. So that creature's health is just one. I also get to get rid of my Virix Embrace spell, banish it, and upgrade it to the nicer version. I believe this. And that gives me four health as well, so I jump up to forty-nine. This character did come into play this turn, correct? He did. Fantastic. I'm going to deal eight damage to that creature that came into play this turn. So he is dead. Okay, when this is destroyed, if you have the forge, reanimate it to this lane. I'm going to go ahead and just bring it back. That was a terrible plan by me. No, it was great. It was a good the job. The good news about that was that I do actually get to uh, get a disintegrate uh, spell that it is better for the next time. I forgot about that. That's no, okay. no, it was really good for me. Devin doesn't like reading the instructions on all of his cards out loud, so... You know, uh, we'll call, we'll call I don't that know. 
I don't know about that. We'll, we'll call that. I don't that know about one. that. It's fine. I don't it's know fine. about that. My strategy for this particular game is to win. Uh, that's strategy number one. Strategy number two is that I feel like spells in this game, while they can be extremely powerful, they're very situational. So my strategy is going to be use as many creatures as possible and be extremely aggressive. Devin tends to fall back on his heels quite a bit, and when I can get him there, he doesn't really know how to recover. So as long as I can stay aggressive and put lots of creatures on the board and have a lot of control, I think I can pretty much take care of this relatively quickly. It seems that my deck combination of these two factions are pretty good at having spells that are effective. So spells have been frequently what I've tried to upgrade first, but also I haven't really yet found a synergy between some of the creature cards that I like. So hopefully I'll be able to, you know, find something or discover it during this game. I'm not super confident, but let's see where it goes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and flip, and now I'm in control of the forge. Well, no, we resolved this fight Did we first. need to do that? Because I feel like we don't really need to. Yeah, well, we resolved again, and then he comes back because I have the forge again. But he does do four more damage to you, which drops you down to just one health total. So we're just going to cover that up. Okay. So I, I just thought it worked out well for me. It did not work out well for me. Because you've got um, one health and one health right there. Yeah, that's, that's very poor. Uh, but so, it, it is I'm okay a, meat, with it. a bit of a meat shield. I'm okay so with it. So now we're going to uh, push this particular person forward. So now Sigmund Freud did have Defender this turn, but unfortunately Sigmund Status... Sigmund Fraud. Sigmund Fraud. Sorry. Sigmund Fraud <laughs> did have Defender this turn, but unfortunately Status Effects fall off first, so he does get to actually advance into the top of the... Uh, the cube. He does indeed. He does indeed. But That's, you now have Forge for this third and final round of the cycle. Yes. Yes, in fact, I do. I often don't think that being first is helpful. Not um, always. Not always. We'll have to see how it goes. Now, an interesting thing about Soul Forge is going to be the upgrade pathway you take. I'm interested to see what Devin and Wes do, because deciding which cards you're actually going to start progressing is a critical moment in this game. You're only going to be able to actually upgrade two out of the five cards you have in your initial hand. Meaning that if you spell it, if you play a spell early, you'll have less tactical board control, but you will start upgrading it. And some of these cards can turn into insane, powerful abilities if you get them around level three or round four. It is maybe not the greatest currently, unfortunately, but I do have something I've not seen before, which is pretty fun. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and place it here. So this is a uh, an Inflaming War stroke Stoker. Mm. Mm. It is a Yeti. Uh, when I deploy this creature, I give uh, creatures adjacent to this plus two Attack. power. Yes. Nice. So now this one moves up to a five, and this one would move up to a seven. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and play Spirit Leash to kill this one at a minus four, minus four. That is very rude. And Again. then I'm gonna give a Spirit plus two, plus two, but I don't have a Spirit in play. I'm gonna banish this spell, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the fancier version of it for my discard pile. And I then, after that, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. I find you to be very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought you'd appreciate it. Thought you'd appreciate it, you know? I, I don't at all, actually. I think he does. Um, not, think, a, not, a, not even a small little bit. I think he does. Um, all right. So, we are going to... We're going to do this, because it's worth it. Um, mm. This is aggressive, and when the uh, if this damages you, it will deal that much damage to an enemy creature as well. Huh. I don't love that. That's a good thing. I don't love that. That is my goal. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm going to unfortunately suffer the consequences of that. Mm -hmm. To get rid of some higher attacking players. I'm going to play my Voltaic Prophet here, which if a spell was played this turn, which it was, give this three shield this turn. So mm -hmm. I will be able to suffer the barrage. No, I won't. My I will fully die. Yeah. It's which great is not you... as 
I think you should just leave that since you did put it down. Just not, yep, it's not as viable. Yeah. But it's okay. I thought I could make him live, and I was going to until you played that card. So now we're going to put the remainder of our deck in our discard pile again. And one of the uh, fun things will be going through this. So I'm going to lose five points here, unfortunately, which yep. is very, very unfortunate. Is it unfortunate? It is. It's quite unfortunate. Okay. Uh, you're going to die as well as it's, I'm going to die. die so the Indomitable Fiend goes away. Also equally which unfortunate. That allows me to get another Indomitable Fiend into the discard. And my Raging Sabertooth do him a flopper here. Both or? of these die. Yes, but that is not the order we're going. It's very important. This is guy it? is going to... Uh, hit you for four points of damage. Yeah. And as soon as he does, he's going to damage, do a damage four to one of your creatures. Yeah, but that wouldn't kill this one. I'm aware, but I am killing that yeah. one. Yeah. For they, 100%. They all die. Yes. Except for that one. Except for this one, yes. So, so Sigmund Freud and Voltaic Prophet. I'm not too upset about that because both of them get fancier versions. And so then I do drop down four points. That is correct. Which so is we are now at a tally of 44 totally worth it to me. 40. I've got some really high spell upgrades that I've, I've accumulated so far, and I think that if I'm able to land them at the right points, I should be able to completely wipe out his creatures and then load in some of my own. I just have to make sure I program it in the right order. Now, the thing to note about Soulforge is cards die quickly here, and they're almost supposed to. They look like tantalizing little bits of things that you can just rip off of your opponent's tableau. But what you're not maybe factoring in is that while they die quickly, they also upgrade fast and get played out again just as fast. You might want to leave a lower level creature alive, hanging on at a bare thread, because it keeps your opponent from well, getting something more powerful and deadly onto the table. So and let's see. Now, the we will have to actually take one of the interesting things about this game that I think makes it pretty unique is you're going to take the remainder of your hand, uh, your deck here, and you're going to place it in the discard pile and then shuffle your entire discard pile. Got one there. It's loose. Yes, he uh, was upgraded. And uh, one of the cool things I think about this is when you're doing that, that actually does significantly change the way things work. Uh, you don't always get the use of your entire deck, so it's not a situation of playing the right cards at the right time or redrawing cards. It's redrawing an entire hand, playing the best of five that you have at that particular time. But sometimes you may not see all of your cards the first couple of times around. Um, I already saw a card this particular uh, last turn that I had not seen before, so I think that's pretty cool. And now the other thing that will happen in this intervening phase is that our Forgeborn at the end of the cycle will get upgraded, which means we now have access to our Tier 2 attacks. And what is your Tier 2 attack? Mine is to move a creature to the back row of its lane and give it minus 5 to attack. That is incredibly unfortunate. Is that just uh, for that one? It's just for that one creature, but it's permanent for the attack minus. And mine is to give up two of my creature, or to give up to two of my creatures plus four in shields this turn. Hmm. Hmm. So potentially saving their lives for one turn. And now you are in charge of the forge, sir. I am. That is true. I think that I might as well win. That might be a hard ask. No, I think I'm going to try to pressure you from the beginning, and so I'm going to exhaust my ability, push this back to the back, and make it have zero attack for the rest. It does have aggressive, however. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. It, it won't come back until the, the end. Yeah. Yes. This and is it's effectively, for the rest of the game, got zero attack. Which is incredibly unfortunate. And so I don't even think I'm going to mess with that so that it just stays just in your gonna, row. Just going to leave it? Yeah. Just like I, I do with defenders? Yeah, you, you messed with me and I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do, because I haven't even played a card yet, is... Waste more time. Nah. No? Okay. Nah. Alright, just checking. I'm going to go ahead and... Oof, now this gives me options. Now that we're at the mid-game... I'm a little surprised I'm still alive. This is about where I died last time. I'm still here, and I've actually hurt West more than I thought I would. And the only thing I have ahead of me is figuring out what the hell I'm doing in this game. I think I'm going to go ahead and create this one, which has shield one, mobility one. When this is destroyed, give one of your creatures three health. 
I'm okay with that right now. Okay. Um, I am going to play my upgraded uh, toward my guardian here, and now instead of just being a plus one, plus one, anytime another creature uh, enters the back row, I actually give him plus two, plus two. Cool. Cool. I don't feel like you actually mean that, but I do. I don't it. at all mean that. Yeah. It's not even slightly how I mean it. Mm-hmm. And then I think the next thing I'll do. Oh, there's so many choices here. But I think I'm going to be brutal and do a stabilizing Justicar. Okay. For a nice seven attack, five. And his deployability doesn't really work. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to. Mobility wise, exhaust my reinforced techno hope to get him out of the way of that placed one because currently these two won't be activating at all in their attacks because they're in the back row, and I've got two now that he has to deal with in the front row. Yes, that is quite unfortunate. Um, so that one does two points of damage, just two. Okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, I am going to play my fleet razor tooth here, which is a mobility of two. Uh, mm. And when deployed, if an opponent gained any health this turn, I can give him plus five. Unfortunately, you're still at your uh, your health and you didn't gain yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. one of the good news is here, this guy uh, does now get plus two, plus two. He does get beefed up, that's true. He's a little bit more beefy. He's pretty darn beefy. He's, Nine attack and ten health. He's very beefy. Okay, so we go to this phase where we resolve all of this. We do. So I am going to be doing one. two damage to you, which yep. drops you down to 38. That sounds wrong, but I... Uh, I well, you were at 40. I know, I just don't like it. Oh. Isn't that allowed? Gotcha. Is it me just not to like something? That's totally fair. Okay. And then uh, you're going to attack, which is going to kill this yes, just a car. But I do take seven, so I only have two hit points left on this particular... And I'm actually kind of okay with that, because I really like the stabilizing Justicar. Alright, so now it is the end of turn. Uh, your guy goes back to unexhausted. My people move forward, thankfully. and we now That is a lot of people to deal with. That is a lot of people for you to have to deal with. Uh, I like that concept. It makes me quite happy. I don't at all, to be honest. Oh, I'm okay with some of this, though. Uh, so I am going to be. I'm gonna. I'm actually feeling quite good about the cards that I've been drawing because for oh, really? some reason I literally picked up the two that I upgraded. And this turn I did the same thing. So I'm going to take this one, which is now my upgraded combat battle hide. So I deploy this, and this turn mm. an enemy creature loses all printed abilities and gets defender. So defender loses all abilities. So he's no longer mobile. Mm. I don't love that. I figured that would be the case. I, I don't love that. I think this is probably necessary for me to do this. Um, because it's not really going well for me otherwise. Mm -hmm. I am going to play Virix Embrace. Okay. And I'm going to... Lots of choices here. You do. I'm going to destroy this creature by okay. doing 6 damage to it, and I gain 6 health, which bumps me back up to 50, and I'm going to need it this round. So, just because of that, now I have upgraded this guy to the nth degree. He is now a level 3. Yeah, I know. Which I uh, feel very, very good about. I know, about. I know. I don't very feel good, good about, about it, to be honest. And the other really great thing that you did when you did that, Devin, was you allowed me to place my Yeti in between both of these people, which gives me plus 4 to their strength uh, for each one. I really, really appreciate that. I feel like you should do it more often. Um, that, I don't now makes, like that. that now makes this guy have 13 uh, for his, and we have 8 over here on the elemental. I'm about to get hammered this turn really badly. You should probably drink more because I feel like that's the appropriate amount of hammered. I have continually been undone by you in this game. Yes, my strategy appears to be working, and that is play better than Devin. It's a good strategy. I'm going to play Energy Surge, which allows me to get a gizmo out there. You have 8 and... 13. Yeah, we'll go ahead and block that. 13 is probably a good place to block, yeah. And then I'm going to upgrade a card in my hand, then discard it. I think I'm going to upgrade this spell, Gauntlets of Solgrim. Okay. So I need both Energy Surge level 2 and Gauntlets of Solgrim level 2. Okay. 
which are going to be in my discard now. And <sighs> then... So now going left to right here, we have uh, doing absolutely nothing because he's defender. Uh, on this side, this poor little gizmo has taken 13 points of damage, but he did do 2 points of damage to me, uh, which Just means wipes, that out. wipes this out here. Gosh, this is brutal. But I actually believe I only had 2 points of health left on him. You're right, so he's dead. So that he actually helps. Dead. Yeah, I, it is slightly unsatisfying. And you're going to do a unopposed 24 damage to me. Soulforge is really about finding a chink in your opponent's armor and a chink in their upgrade path. It's this back and forth for the first probably third of the game, but now we're starting to see how each strategy plays out. The reality is every game you play is not going to end the same or end with the same set of cards in your hand. Not only is there a degree of randomness in what you're drawing up and the order you actually collect them, but also you're only probably going to get two, maybe three of these golden cards if you're lucky. So deciding which one matters to you the most is a very important question. Devin, you are as dumb as you are cute. And that probably means you're pretty dumb. And I like it. Ugh. That feels extremely uh, satisfying. Uh, satisfying. And I also get to upgrade my one of my most powerful characters because you killed him uh, in doing so. Yeah, no worries. It's now swapped from 38 to 50 to 38 to 26. Hmm. <clears throat> now I feel I'm good. In the I feel forge, good. and you're not. That's correct. And then, and this will be our last hand for this round. And I can tell you now that I realize I just did that. That I put was put my people up here, but they're technically supposed to be in the back row. Though this one does push up to here now. Mm -hmm. I was doing that in the wrong order. Um. Hmm. 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 This sucks for me. This sucks for me. This sucks for me. Okay. I'm going to, for free, play Necro Vive. Because you have more creatures in play than me. So you destroy one of your creatures outright. This is a very unfortunate uh, thing that you're doing here, Devin. No worries. Here for you. Here for you. Hmm. So, this may sound like a silly thing for me to do, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy, who actually has the most health. Uh, the reason being that I get to upgrade him to the highest level now. I don't like that. And I believe at his highest level he's extremely scary, uh, which usually frightens Devin. I frighten easily, though. Relatively simply, yes. I'm upgrading my Necrovive because I've banished the spell that I used. That was free, so that wasn't even my action. I'm now going to slot in this indomitable fiend here. Mm. Uh, the good thing about hamsters is that they frighten extremely easily, but they're also manipulative and small, so they can kind of weasel their way into different situations. So you have to stomp on them as quickly as possible, otherwise they get a little, little dangerous. I think hamsters get scared sometimes, and they run in circles hoping to escape their fate, and they just don't realize that the more and more they run, the more they stay in place. It seems like a good plan. She has enough health to kill the low one. So far. Yeah. So far. Uh, well... It's a I, whopping 8 attack, though. I am going to go ahead and uh, play Flame Jet, which is an interesting spell, because it's one of those where if I damage myself by 5, I actually get to play it for free. Are you uh, going to do that? And I am. So I'm going to take 5 points of damage, but so are you. Well, that drops me down to a nice 21 versus your 33. And uh, I do get to upgrade that beautiful spell so that uh, next time I bring it up it's quite nice, but I still get to play a card now, which I'm very excited about. I don't like that. Uh, the main reason I'm extremely excited about it is because I am going to go ahead and play uh, this... Toxic Spores, mm -hmm. which will allow me to give this creature plus three health. Okay. So it now is actually at a five. Nice. Uh, which is good, so we'll put plus three here so we know it's at a five. And you can give a creature negative And I can health? give another creature negative three health. Okay. Which I think is a great idea to go ahead and do that. Cool. So My so Indomitable Fiend is going to reanimate. 
That's a good, good choice. And again, with the reanimation, that is the second time I have made that really dumb mistake. Did you see how excited I was about it, though? I was, and I was continuing to let you be excited. I thought it made sense to let you be excited. I feel like... You should have been like, hey, you remember the last time you did that? Why would I do it that? Didn't, it it's didn't 33 well to 21. Be excited as you want. That was really unfortunate. All right, yeah. so now you get to play your second card. I do. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and play my Spirit Forge Sentinel there. Okay. Might as well get rid of these two cards. See what you're going to do. So I have a couple of different options. The question is, do I want to use another spell so I can upgrade it uh -huh. uh, and then have it to be significantly more powerful the next go-round? Yeah. Or do I want to go ahead and uh, block this two points of damage coming after mm. me? I don't really feel like it's that exciting. It's um, never been that exciting to be Because I can take two points of damage, but the opportunity to give six points of damage to Devin does make me really happy. That would bring me down to a lowly 15. Other thing that I can do. Why don't you kill this one again? I don't. I I appreciate you wanting to offer me that. Uh, unfortunately, I would rather not. So what I am gonna go ahead and do is play. Is play this uh, abetting mystic here, which may not have been the best option, but I I feel it it does more unique things. So you're giving another creature attack? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and give another one of my creatures plus three attack this turn, plus it also, or excuse me, plus three attack, period, and it will also give me uh, the ability to have it have mobility plus one. So in mm. doing so, um, I'm actually going to, to give this particular one the uh, mobility plus one, so I am going to tap it. Uh, it's, it's a little mm. difficult to tap, so we're just going to kind of turn it sideways here. Now the interesting thing is this one also allows me to do again, so two different deploy options. Because it is a very mm, weak mm, mm, mage, right? Mm, mm, glass cannons? Mm, glass cannons, that's what we normally call them. Mm, mm, uh, so I can give one of my creatures an additional plus three, mm, uh, which I'm going to mm, go mm, ahead and do again. Um, but mm, ironically, I'm not going to give it to this one, which which could be fun. You give it that one for I breakthrough. I sure am, because it also allows this one to have breakthrough. And the keyword breakthrough means that the damage that I do, uh, instead of just killing this particular sp or sentinel, it's actually going to kill the sentinel and then continue an through. Additional seven damage right is to what's going to happen there. And right then, to Devin. And then a nice 11. That's going to be an additional 18 damage. I want to be down to a nice three. Yeah. Nice, wholesome three. So uh, we'll go ahead and go through this now. So you're yeah. going to do uh, a paltry two points of damage to me with this particular row. Shut right? up. And then you are going to do six here. So you can well, go ahead and save. Well, that deploys back there, so that doesn't attack me. This is true. Oh, in f yes, that's true. Yeah. It does It does deploy back here. Yeah. So so you're going to do two points here, and you're going to do six points here. I assume it's okay to do them in that particular order? Yeah, it's totally fine to do it in that. Fantastic. And then you're going to do 11 points there. Uh, plus, 11 points and then here. break through seven there. So you're going to do 18 yeah. points to me. Yeah, as long as that math is correct, no, I feel it's, like you're, it's, you're it's good there. No, it's deadly correct. 25 yeah. to 3 is going to be the result here. Okay. That one does take at least two, two damage, Two points though. of damage. Yep, you're right. So uh, let's let's go ahead and we'll put a negative two points on here so that we're aware it does have two points of damage. Yeah. Now my abetting mystic going to go up to that front row where it wanted to be Stop in the talking. first one. Um, Stop but it's, talking. It's not going to be there. Stop and talking. Now, this is, unfortunately, I didn't end up using uh, my but gift But this is the final cycle creatures. round. So I won't be able to use it, unfortunately. Stop but talking. I frankly, don't like I don't find it to be extremely uh, effective in this particular turn, and I kind of forgot about it. So so we've got three health left. West has, um, like, over 30. Uh, I think I've got a strat to pull this one out. Just, uh... Don't want to divulge it too soon because I want <laughs> want you to be as amazed as I'll be. But I've I've got a plan. Forgeborn are essential to this, and we've seen both West and Devon overlook some of those abilities. And really, depending on who you pick, that does start to determine the pathway you take with your cards and when you can take advantage of your opponent. Uh, for me, I kind of view Forgeborn as the Hail Mary in some cases, the thing that'll save you when a crisis happens. But if you use them tactically enough, they can also be the thing that shifts position. 
giving you that opening that you need. Because Soul Forge is all about that. It's tactical card play, back and forth, pinging each other until you find that one little weakness, and then exploiting it as quickly and maliciously as you can. That is one of those things where if you forget about something or you play poorly, you're just kind of stuck with the uh, the results of how you played. I'm so not happy with this right now. I, I've gotten you down to 25, which is better than I did the first game. Significantly better than you did the first game. But what are you at now, Devin? Three. You're at three points. Three. Three points. And we're only in the third round? Three. Three. Okay. Uh, do you want to go ahead and tell the good folks here who are watching this incredibly short game what uh, your talent is for this particular turn with your Forgeborn? Losing. <laughs> yes. Uh, you are very good at that, but your Forgeborn has a special talent. What might that be? It is a probably too little, too late shields up, hmm. which I could have used earlier. You yes. and your creatures get six shield this turn, which is that's, a very useful one. That's incredibly useful. Yeah, but you definitely should have used that last turn, but you didn't have the opportunity, so. I so, don't like you. You do. A I little. Do. I a do little. like you. Yeah, I that's like true. You. Uh, and mine is actually shapeshift, so this is my favorite of all of the powers, uh, I think, honestly, of all the different options that are out there, because I can give a creature plus six in power and plus six in health, and all creature types it becomes this turn so if there's any spells that affect a particular type of creature this particular creature will gain the benefit of of that which is pretty cool so it's a plus six in power and plus six in health uh which is pretty awesome right out of the gate now i'm no longer in charge of the forge you are so mm -mm. i already switched him. you did okay fine i already switched him boo boo all right well you didn't say it out loud so i didn't know and i was kind of gleefully, i switched him boo boo i was ex i was gleefully excited by the opportunity to i know you are. to play uh and and potentially win right out of the gate yeah yeah i don't think this game's gonna go very long my mm -hmm. my options here are find a way to stop three points of damage. That's it. That's all I got going for me right now. Mm -hmm. Three. Th I mean, that's that's good, right? It's not good. No. Why would you think it's good? I mean, I feel like you have the opportunity. Um, so I think the first thing that I'm going to do is play my upgraded Toxic Spore uh, option here, which means I can give one of my creatures plus six in health are you going to um, auto-kill one of my creatures, too? I am actually going to also auto-creep. So now this one is going to go up in four in health, uh, which is great because I had lost a little bit of health there. So with the minus two and plus six, that gives me an additional plus four. Uh, and I'm going to take six points of health away from one of your monsters. Now, I could kill this one, uh, but it only does two points of damage, so I'm not that worried about it. And now, please, is this particular one uh, I that don't one have that comes back? Anymore, so. so if I kill it this turn, it's dead. It will actually die for yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and kill it this turn. Okay. You see how I learned there? You did learn. I mean, it only took me three times to killing it. Three times killing that particular uh, thing. I, I killed it three times. This is not good for me. Um, this is really not good for me. This is the final round, and we're sitting at 25 to 3. The only question I'm asking now is, what mistakes did Devin make, and is there a pathway for him to win at this moment? And I'm not entirely sure there is a pathway. I mean, the best chance for him is to establish a little bit of board control and draw into a spell that just starts killing West's more powerful creatures. He also just got his Forgeborn ability, which, if he remembers, is going to give him the option to add 6 shield to everything, including himself. That leaves him with technically nine health for the next round or two that might buy him just enough time to get board control back in his favor. But honestly, not suffering any damage and specifically not suffering three damage, that's a tall order to ask. I do think Devin overlooked some of the upgrade pathways he had and he left himself open to, well, responding to West. West took an aggressive front quickly, established and kept board control, and Devin's been on his heels for the last three or four turns. It's not a place you want to be. Did you really just ask me how Devin can win? Like, I think that's the craziest question ever. There's no way for Devin to win. All you have to do, Devin, is block all of this. And you do have a mobility one there. Don't forget that. 
So in theory... I am going to use my mobility one to go up against the abetting magic. That's a good plan. That's a I good think plan. that makes the most sense. Yep. And I've got some other options here. That's just a butt ton of attack. It is. A it's absolute right. butt ton. It is a significant amount of attack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find some preventative stuff for myself, and I'm going to play Spirit Leash. I'm going to kill that. Because it does six points, yes. Yep. You, sir, are a jerk. But I do still kind of like it. This is not Sometimes. going well for me. I, I don't see a way out right now. I don't see a way out right now. So I'm going to upgrade my... I, there, there's one card. I can't even play this card. This card, when I deploy, does five damage to me. I have a card that I actually just can't play because it will kill <laughs> me. Because it will kill you? Yeah. I feel like that's actually a really just good way for you to die. Go ahead and discard. <laughs> just just seppuku with my with my own card. It would be kind of the funny. The honorable way out. It would be kind of funny. Um, I am going to go ahead and uh, use my Fleet Razor Tooth. Which does have a mobility of three. I'm dead no matter what. I can't stop him. And if an opponent gained any health this turn, uh, I would actually get plus seven with him. But unfortunately, you didn't gain any health this turn. But I am going to go ahead and use my shapeshift ability because I feel like that is a great opportunity. Plus six and plus. D just don't even put the cards out there. There's really no point. <laughs> just, d just. But, but I can only play one creature. I don't have any spells. I'm going to give my plus six, plus six to my abetting mystic because she really did. She a, would actually have died. So yeah, that makes sense. These two I can't yeah. do anything about. So I don't want her to die. She's got I plus six, like, plus six. Yeah, I feel like she has the the ability to to really bring me forward here. Yeah, yeah, sure. To to really sure. see through. To the, sure. To the end. Um, sure. She's just great. She's, You're she's the worst. Really I'm just gonna play. I can't even kill anybody with it. I'm gonna. I'm. You know what? He is a fraud. I'm gonna bring Sig Sigmund fraud out. Sigmund's coming back. And here. he has got imposter syndrome in this war, and he is the most useless zombie scientist I've ever seen. Because mm -hmm. he's about to die hopelessly and not reanimate. But the good thing about him is he is aggressive, so you were actually able to play him in that location. That is true. Yeah, that is true. So uh, going through from left uh, or from right to left for you me, you kill this I, one. I do kill that one, which you, gives this ten health actually now, but it doesn't matter because you have twelve. Damage. That's good, and uh, that does mean you did do two points of damage to me, so that would bring me down to uh, plus four here. Um, so I'll go ahead and notate that as well. Uh, nothing on this one. Uh, we did eight points of damage to you directly on this one. Go ahead and, and mark that down as eight points of damage to you, which brings you to... Um, negative five. A negative negative score. No worries. Yep, and then... Uh, I don't think you could be negative dead, so I'm just going to put zero. You're going to put zero? I got you down to half health this time. You did. It's markedly better than last it time. It is significantly better than you last time. You know what, I'm time. even going to... Increase my reinforced Techno Hulk because they they died because they did do die and yes. Sigmund Sigmund Fraud died yep. so I get the best Sigmund Fraud possible. You do and how much damage did Sigmund Fraud do? He, he did, did eight. Uh, he did tier eight. eleven. So you only have three. Great. Left. So I only have three points of damage left, which is great. You did you did quite well. Oh. Yeah. You know, you remember in the last round when I forgot to use mine? You also forgot to You know what's crazy is that if I had shielded use. myself, you would have only done two damage. And you could have played that spell that you didn't play, because it does three points of damage to you, it would have actually just hit your shield. Yeah, no, it wasn't a spell, it was a creature. Mm. But I actually would have been alive. Yeah. And so would have Sigmund Fraud. Yeah. And maybe so would have... Probably not. Should have activated that that ability there for my Forgeborn. So as I've said before, would have kept me alive one more round. Devin does have a difficulty of sometimes playing the Reading. correct cards. So I could have activated my Forgeborn. That would have made me last one round longer, and I absolutely died. And there was not really much way I could do to not die other than activating my Forgeborn, which I didn't do because I forgot about it. So I kind of made fun of West the whole time about that that monster that kept reanimating. And then, while I was so giddy about making fun of him, I kind of forgot to pay attention to my own stuff. And that, that was a mistake. West Wings! Mingo Wings! Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Mingo has won again. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all being here. I want to thank all the little people, just not the hamsters. Uh, but I also want to thank Devin. I'm a gracious winner, so Devin, you're able to wash my feet this evening, and uh, you can cook me dinner, because that's what losers do, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. 
Reading's but tough. But I also have difficulty playing reading because I killed the same guy like three times. Reading's tough. Ridiculously. That was a pretty quick clash. It was a bit of a quick clash. You did fall. You You have found such a good synergy with that double deck right there. Yeah, I do believe that the red and green is quite powerful. I, I don't know if I have found the most effective way to navigate the blue and the purple. Mm -hmm. It's it's okay. Uh, I feel like if a skilled player were on the other side, it's possible... They could have done it. That they could have done, they could have done it a little better. Mm. Possibly. I, I don't know. You know, it, <sighs> it's possible. So it was quick, it was brutal, it was short. Like yeah. most of the experiences people have with me as a friend. And this was... A fun experience. It was fun, right? That's the term we use it in was, this context. It was pretty fun, yeah. It was fun. It was pretty this fun. was Soul Forge Fusion, a hybrid deck building game. This is Wes Todd, the victor, the absolute smasher who, you know, charged through my ranks and I didn't have much ranks to begin with, and you this. kind of walked past them and slapped me silly. Yes. Like a tortilla to the face. Like a tortilla to the face. Alright. We'll see you guys next time. Make sure you do the important thing. Go out and play some games. Bye. So Devin got crushed, mistakes were made, and normally the game would last a little bit longer. We might see more powerful cards come out, but in an average game, if you're talking about 30 minutes per play, that's quick enough that you can swap decks, switch factions, try another Forgeborn, or just go at it one more time with the deck that you have. Who knows, depending on your play style, there might be a deck out there that doesn't quite work for you, but the good news, because there's so much variety and so many variations of them, there's absolutely a deck out there that will.